This is an experiment. What do billionaires, cultural icons, and world-class athletes have in common? I'm about to find out. I'm John Aguilar, serial entrepreneur, former decathlete, and creator and host of the CNN Philippines business reality show, The Final Pitch. Each week, I try to unlock the secrets of Asia's world-class performers to come up with hacks that I can apply in my own life. My goal is to have you apply them in yours. This is the podcast designed to change your life. This is Methods to Greatness. Methods to Greatness is powered by Converge. Experience better. If you'd like to work with Converge, check them out at gofiber.ph or connect with them through their social media channels. Methods to Greatness is also powered by Perfect Health Philippines, a leading provider of innovative and premium massage and healthcare products to customers across Southeast Asia. This partnership is all about improving people's lives, health, and well-being. Visit perfecthealthph.com to know more. Greetings to our listeners from the Philippines, Asia, and beyond. Our guest is internationally renowned singer and songwriter Anne Goon. Her debut international album, Snow on the Sahara, was released in 33 countries in the late 1990s. It topped the charts in Italy, Spain, and several countries in Asia. Most recently, Anne Goon was one of the hosts of Asia's Got Talent, and in 2014, she received the World Music Award for World's Best Selling Indonesian Artist. She was also named UN Goodwill Ambassador for Food and Agriculture Organization. Angun speaks and has released albums in Bahasa, English, and French. Please enjoy my interview as we dissect Angun's path to greatness. Hello, Angun. Welcome to Methods to Greatness. Thank you. Hi, John. Thank you for the invitation. It's so nice to have you. Um, for the benefit of our listeners and viewers, where are you right now? I'm at home in Paris. Uh, we have been traveling to uh, Germany and then tomorrow we'll be leaving for Lisbon. It's school holiday. So, you know, going to Portugal with my daughter and my husband. Wow. <laughs> so we have some sun. Yeah, some sun. And, and, and how has this pandemic been for you? I, I know that you've been busy. I think uh, it has not slowed you down. Well, it has slowed everyone down which is uh, which was somehow it was kind of difficult to adjust at the beginning because you know when when you live uh, when your normal life is about uh, traveling around the world and this is, we were always traveling every month uh, uh, to Asia or to um, other places in Europe and then all of a sudden everything stopped but then um, I had a lot of time with my family and of course you know, uh, I missed my family in Indonesia, but um, it's it's everything we we try to take, you know, the positive out of it. I know that we are very blessed compared to many people who, you know, who, whose whose families are severely hit by this, and um, we were we we were kind of um, yeah, we were protected somehow, and uh, and um, so my heart, you know of course goes to uh, those family who are who, who are separated and then who who lost loved ones and um but but we're doing okay you know all along it's always good to know that um at least in your case you know you're 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 with your family not everyone is as lucky and exactly. um i'd like to get into uh first and foremost i guess your family um how you started as uh someone who was uh, literally just a kid uh, starting your career. So let's talk about that. Uh, yes. I, I believe you started when you were seven, Angun. Uh, I'd like to, is, is that correct? If, if, if I'm not mistaken, is that? Uh... Uh, I, I started singing on stage when I was seven. We used to go to this recreational place in Jakarta with my family every weekend. And there's always a stage over there with, with band. And then the uh, MC always asked who wants to sing, who wants to sing. And I was always first online. And I was singing the songs of the Beatles because uh, my father would, um, you know, he wanted us to uh, uh, listen to English songs. So that was how I started. And um, I started my, my career 
uh, around nine because I I um, I was uh, I made my first album at nine. So that was more professional. Um, I, I would say, you know, like uh, with the promotion, going on TV, doing interviews as a kid. But uh, yeah, so when I was nine and then I haven't stopped ever since. I was lucky. You've never looked back. You know, in the Philippines, Anguin, everyone sings. <laughs> I know. Everyone is a good singer, at least most people. No, is but it's true. In, in, it's, in Indonesia? It's, it's crazy because, you know, uh, when I was doing Asia's Got Talent, whenever we had um, Filipino contestants, I'm sure they're, they're, they're great singers. And then David Foster always said to me, like, there must be something in the water. I don't know, in the water, <laughs> in the mangoes or everywhere. This, Filipinos are such natural born singers with powerful, huge voice. And, and, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's one of those um, uh, uh, techniques that we all envy, you know? Wow, coming from you, uh, I, that, that really says a lot about Filipinos. I, for one, I also sing Angun, uh, ah. not, uh, not professionally. Uh, that was a frustrated uh, second career that I was supposed to have but did not pursue. Really? So, yes, yes. I actually had a, um, with, along with my quote unquote uh, band uh, when we were freshmen in college, a recording contract, which we never pursued. How come? So we all just got really busy with school. So, you know, good ah, boys right. like us, you know, who do not go into showbiz, we do other things. Right. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, so, so, so you, you're more of the academical uh, and, and you pursue that way than... than... Academic, no, not no? Really. I did not go there. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's it's another funny. story. <laughs> but it's funny because in Indonesia, uh, we're, I mean, back back then, music is not really considered as something very serious so okay. you know it's not like um and and up up until today i still think that what i do is not really important you know compared to teachers compared to uh, uh doctors uh, what i do is to to entertain people and 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 um and and i'm always feel uh that you know, I'm just here to entertain. There's nothing serious about it. It's about music, but I try to do it wholeheartedly and I try to put meanings into um, my songwritings and, and uh, because again, it's just music, you know. It's just music. Um, I do not honestly know how to react to that because um, I, I think I share this with a lot of people, but music gives you, like when, when, when I listen, for example, to snow on the Sahara, it, it, it kind of uplifts the spirit. And I think, uh, you know, to say that it is just music is really uh, one, of the, one of the biggest understatements you could ever make. I, I mean, I, I may well, be biased because I'm an artist in a way also, but it's really surprising, Angun, that you say it uh, that way. Because, because it is. I mean, uh, it's just music, but at the same time, it is important. But I do not have the, um, um, I don't think music can change the world. It can change your perception of the world, but it does not have, um, uh, it's not a tool. It's not something so powerful. I, I think, I think, of course, there are, um, I'm, I'm a music lover. I listen to music every day. This is my life. There's uh, some kind of a blurry lines in and within, you know, what what my personal life is and what what music. There's always like a soundtrack playing in my head, whatever it is I'm doing, and and so it is important. But you know how um, I feel like a lot of musicians nowadays they think too much of themselves. And and they and they um, and it's 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 becoming bigger than who they are. And I think you know, uh, at the end of the day, you just have to enjoy it. It's just music. It's 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 to share with people. You know, I'm I'm I was I'm also a, a coach uh, for. Um, I used to be the, the the mentor on X Factor and also the Voice Indonesia. And then. That is one thing that I always say to the 
to uh, new singers, enjoy it. It's just music. You have to have to um, have that love and passion, but that's it. It's 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 really. I mean, you have to put. Uh, there is a big difference between. Um, uh, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is you have to put. You you have to be serious about it. You have to put your skill. You have to put all the goodness, uh, all the, the 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 positive energy and everything that you want to put into into your music. But that's it. Don't get it, uh, you know, bigger than your head. Don't believe in your own promotion. Don't. You know, it's just everything now. It's all so blurry, you know. Th that's what I meant by it. I get you know. I get you know. That's a very good reminder. For a lot of artists out there who, yes, um, uh, I do understand that sometimes you do take things too seriously. And um, yeah. I think that that's a very healthy perspective, Angun, of, of art in general, I think, as well. I, I, I well, it's, it's, uh, I think so. I think, I think um, nowadays, um, you know, where, where, where everything, I mean, competition is super hard. Right. especially for new singers and um, contract you have to you have to know how to read your contract you have to know how to protect yourself and protect your music um, I have a own uh, have your ownership of your own music even people like Taylor Swift who's a massive massive superstar uh, she had problems with that you know so it's it's more than ever you have to um, uh, if this is your livelihood, you have to protect it, but um, you have to be serious about it. But again, this is your job. This is uh, music is one of the most wonderful uh, media, one of the most wonderful vehicle uh, to express yourself. And uh, but at the same time, again, you have to make the difference. You have to uh, set the boundaries as well. Right. You know, I really admire you for being, I think, uh, in every sense of the world, an international artist because of not just your origins, but where you've been and where you continue to thrive in your career. Um, it's, been a, it's been a great career, and which has spanned uh, continents. And um, I'd like to know, Anguin, because this is Methods to Greatness, what, is, what has been the, um, I guess, the factor that has enabled you to um, I, I guess, go across boundaries um, mm -hmm. and, and you have such a thriving long career. I, I think a lot of artists would envy. I mean, especially now in this day and age, um, everything's so fleeting. What, what's the secret, Angun, for, for everything that you've done, uh, you know, these past years? Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> it's a, a lot of compliments, really. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I really believe that honesty um, has to be has to be upfront. I'm I'm always I I uh, it's it's really hard, but I try to be who I am as a person as an artist. I I do not I would never wish to um, um, to conceal uh, who I am as a person. I'm I come from Indonesia. I'm a, I'm a proud Javanese woman. And I speak with my accent. I'm not trying to, um, I don't know, uh, absorb somebody else's culture and uh, or, or 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 accent or whoever. Uh, you know the way I react as a as a singer or as a person, just to fit into the market. I think individuality and um, it is very important nowadays especially in the world where everyone sounds a bit the same in the radios or and sexuality uh, sells a lot in music in music videos and I think um, if you if you stay true to um, whoever you are with the uh, you have to find at first, your 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 strong your strong points and your identity, having that identity is very very important, and keeping it is very important. This is actually what differentiates you from from all the others. 
and and it is hard because you know I I did not have models like role models. I mean, I know Leah Salonga has made it happen for many uh, singers in in Broadway. True. And 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 she was one of this, you know, like uh, uh, beams. And by the way, I'm, I'm probably be, uh, uh, because I just had this offer to do musical, and I thought of her, and I thought of meeting her, and then um, a couple of years back during my UN years, and 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 again, um, uh, for me, she is she's one true. I mean, there is one Lea Salonga. Yes. She is that one identity that people would turn to. Ah, Broadway, Lea Salonga. So I'm I'm thinking that uh, uh, when I started my career in uh, internationally, that that is one of the most important thing to keep your identity, to keep who you are as an artist, as a person, as a woman. What do you want to say? What is your uh, who are you really so uh, i think that is um again that's one of the keys so in the world full of people who look like each other <laughs> sound <laughs> like each other and um, music is uh, you know is very difficult to differentiate then you have to um have that it's important right well there definitely is just one angu and you are you're an icon <laughs> And uh, very truly proudly Indonesian. I'm very proud personally of your successes because we're from the same region. We're neighbors. Exactly. Philippines and Indonesia. Brothers so, and sisters. We correct. look alike. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, I wouldn't go that far that we look alike. Uh, you are. No, a, but I get that a lot. Like, like people would ask me, are you Filipinos? Yeah, ah! no, I, meant, I, I thought not... you meant uh, if we looked alike, I'm bald, you're not. So, but <laughs> if you meant, uh, but you know, I I um I have heard of Bahasa, and it does sound so similar to Tagalog. So I do know that there are a few words that are that are uh, similar as well yeah. uh, with Bahasa Anak, and Tagalog. Salamat. Yes. Um. What else? What else? Makan. <laughs> Sorry. Makan, no. Maka makano or. Yeah. Yeah. Mak uh, like eat, uh, to eat. Oh, okay. I think Is that's. It that's a different dialect. I think that's um that's Pampanga. So you've gone a step further. That's one of our dialects. Um, oh hey. So you're, you're you're way more advanced than you think. But, uh, <laughs> Without even knowing it. <laughs> but you know, it's it's um it's great to have a fellow Southeast Asian really represent as well. Um, you know, not everyone, for example, in the West is aware of of you know the beauty and the talent that we have here in Southeast Asia. True. And um, not that there's someone like you who really has represented as well. And one of the avenues by which you've done this is with Asia's Got Talent. And, yes. And, you know, my, my buddy Ravilson Fernandez was one of the hosts there. And he was just telling me uh, a while back when we were having coffee, what a great experience um, that show was for him working with you, working with David Foster. So I'd like to know. Angun, from your experience, what was it like, and what a what a show it was? I was, I I enjoyed every single moment of Asia's Got Talent, from from the the the, the audition part to the final. You know that uh, on the first uh, season, I chose El Gama Penumbra as Ooh, yes. my golden, yes. you know, but <laughs> and 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 they they won big time. And, sorry, and sorry, I'm going for the benefit of those who are not familiar with them. Can you explain to, 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 to our audience exactly yeah. who won that season? Uh, who won that season? The first season was El Gama Penumbra from yes. the Philippines. Yes. Their act is they actually do shadow um, uh, shadow shows. Shadow, it's not really shadow, shadow puppets, but they use parts of their bodies. They right. use some uh, accessories, very little accessories. And and just with that, they managed. I actually, I actually teared up a few times because because the way they were showing their their um uh, the story the storytelling is so palpable and so emotional and the talent and I don't know the amount of work that they've done with so little. Uh, means with with so many as with with, with uh, of course a lot of times but not 
but not um, you know they're not very sophisticated in and 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 that is for me is talent. And when I saw their their um, their show the first time, I had to I had to hit um, I really had to hit the golden buzzer because because it it's it's just for me it um it captures the whole essence of hard work of skills of um will of um everything in between that makes asia great and everything in between that makes um um i don't know the the the, the, the fact that they tell this the, the the story about mother earth about um about uh, families being torn apart and then everything comes back together about love. I don't know. It's just, it's just it, it, there was something so obvious and they won and I'm so happy for, <laughs> for their achievements. And then, you know, they apparently they performed as well in, uh, in the US and it's, it's, it's huge, you know? And I think that um, when, if, if the world, when, when, when the show was out and I said to, to David, I think we just witnessed greatness here. And, um, and it comes from the Philippines. And for, for me, it was like, uh, of course, there are great singers from the Philippines, but then there's also El Gama Penumbra. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> I was a land of singers time. and you have like a shadow play act yes. getting the top prize exactly exactly so i was i was extremely happy to have been witnessing you know to have been a part of that and to witness that and um, yeah i hope they're fine <laughs> i hope we can cross <laughs> path again. Well, on behalf of uh, all filipinos out there I'd like to thank you, Angun, for pressing that golden buzzer because <laughs> it gave us, at least for that moment, uh, a national treasure. And I was fortunate enough to have seen their act through the years in various yeah. events. And um, I can truly say that they, they really have the talent. And um, I think they, they really made us uh, Filipino proud. I have to say, if I hadn't pressed that button, the, 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 the golden buzzer, somebody else would have done it because it was so obvious and then and then also i wanted to say that they are so generous with their time i know that they they also performed for the elderly they also perform in uh, orphanages and um, and and um it it gives another layer of um, uh, of beauty and greatness and humanity into their I mean, no wonder, no wonder they, they, they perform that way and no wonder they have such strong messages. So anyway, I can go on and on about El Gama Penumbra, as you can see. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Angun. Very, very, um, uh, I guess, inspiring uh, to hear that uh, from you as one of the judges of that talent show. And it was really such an honor for us in the Philippines to have, had, have been represented by them. Methods to Greatness is powered by Converge. Experience better. Converge has been an instrumental partner for myself, for our organization, because everything we do right now is digital. Everything involved with other companies, and all of this is done online. And our medium being video is very, very highly data-driven. We need a stable, reliable internet connection to make everything we do work. What Converge has given us was a way to be able to successfully carry out all of the tasks of the team, reach out to our audience, to our market, and also allowed us to be able to create more things with what we do. My team has been a direct beneficiary of this. I think this pandemic has given us a lot of opportunities to pivot, and this is our latest pivot into the future, which really is a digital world for Methods to Greatness. I'm interviewing world-class performers, icons, CEOs from Asia, from around the world. All of those interviews are done online. They're all done via a video call. It was very critical that we had a reliable internet connection that would enable me to carry on these conversations with these icons from all around the world. That is one of the reasons why we're able to do what we do now. If you'd like to work with Converge, check them out at gofiber.ph or connect with them through their social media channels. This episode is also brought to you by Perfect Health Philippines. 
Did you know that massages are considered one of the best ways to recover from exercise and is considered an indispensable part of any fitness training and recovery regimen? Getting a regular massage not only detoxifies your muscles from lactic acid buildup, but also increases muscle performance, blood flow, reduces pain, and induces better sleep. If you don't have access to a masseuse, the next best thing is a massage chair or a massage gun. Perfect Health has a complete lineup of massage chairs with a whole range of features and price points. Their top-of-the-line model, Perfection 2, has all the bells and whistles. From 3D full body and foot massage functions, voice command, Bluetooth, and zero gravity. Their Perfect Relaxer Massage Gun is a personal favorite of mine, which I use on my quads every time I come from a long bike ride. Methods to Greatness in partnership with Perfect Health Philippines has come up with a special discount promo that is exclusive to our followers and subscribers. To avail of the special promo discount, get in touch with Perfect Health's professional healthcare consultants at perfecthealthphcustomerservice at gmail.com or via hotline 02-8831-6944 and give the promo code MTG. That's the Methods to Greatness promo code MTG and the healthcare consultants will hook you up with the best premium massage chairs, massage guns, and other healthcare products, all with a special discount. You know, I'm going, I'd like to now get to your own, I guess, um, message of um, goodwill. Um, can you give us a sneak peek and going into your stint as a UN goodwill ambassador for food and agriculture organization? So um, can you give us an, an idea of what, what that is about and your involvement in the organization? Well, I, I first worked with the UN in back in 2005 for microcredit. Um, it was because, you know, Indonesia, as many of other um, countries where it's, there are, there are places that is so far out, uh, uh, so, so um, remote that people actually suffer illiterism, they, they, they cannot write, and then they don't have access to finance. Um, and then, so microcredit make this happen. And um, so I was, uh, I was one of the spokesperson for this program, and I loved it so much. I traveled and um, to meet uh, and to convince banks in, in, in various countries to loan money for, actually, for those who don't actually Ne would never have that kind of uh, services, you know, for for poor people, and uh, for those who are uh, actually in, in in great need, and give them a loan. Giving them a loan means that you you give them back their dignity, and 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 um, and actually the uh, uh, the success rate is um, close to a hundred percent. And not only that, you see now people act, uh, have more and more, um, uh, they, they, they feel that they're worthy. And then, then they started off their businesses that way, small business, and then, and then becoming uh, hopefully bigger and bigger one day. So I started off with them uh, in 2005, and then I was transferred <laughs> to a food and agriculture uh, organization. Because Indonesia is one of the countries where uh, nature is so dense, is is, is is very strong. But then at the same time, we are as well, um, uh, you know, with the um, palm oil industry, uh, we are also regarded, uh, the, the, the whole world is looking at us because there's a lot of deforestation, there's a lot of... Uh, um, the, Criminality, I have to say, uh, around the the, the uh, th that involves the the, um, the forest areas, and then so just about raising awareness about the fact that deforestation is not irreversible. You can always plant back, and you can always um, it's 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 something that we have to um, convince governments as well because the UN alone sometimes they cannot have the power especially on the, the, the on the countries because they work with NGOs and we need we need to have the government to help us out um, you know in front of this uh, gi ginormous agro element uh, you know industry and um, so so raising awareness about that 
for many, many years. And um, one of the most successful was uh, in China where, you know, we planted, uh, not we, <laughs> uh, you know, the um, millions of trees were planted in mere two months. And uh, so seeing that and trying to do something for the planet, actually, for the uh, for 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 the greater goods, it's uh, gives me some kind of um, not not just satisfaction. I feel like I'm useful because, again, as I said to you earlier, uh, I'm only an entertainer. I want to do good, and if if um, me doing that is by writing lyrics that have meaning and that can, um, you know, inspire people to uh, uh, look something differently about their life or to appreciate their life. And then at the same time, in what I do as a goodwill ambassador, or, you know, I raise awareness, of, for example, about the mangrove uh, forest situation in Indonesia or elsewhere, because, you know, Indonesia was hit severely during tsunami. And I learned that if we had planted in, in like, a, I don't know, a hundred square meter of mangrove around the coastal area, it would have stopped the wave and it would have probably, uh, we would have saved many, many, many lives. So those are one of the things, um, those are the things that I'm uh, really passionate about. And I would really um, love to be able to do probably even more seriously. <laughs> Um, in the future, yes. Right. You know, Angun, you said in one of your previous interviews um, that you being Asian is actually an advantage uh, when you write the songs that you write, um, even from an Indonesian or Javanese point of view. Uh, can you share with us why, why that is so? Um, because just simply the fact that I'm, I was born with certain values, um, that are very different than Europeans or American values. And my, or just the way, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's who I am as, an, um, as a person and who I tried to, um, uh, to teach to my daughter, actually. She's 14 now. She speaks Indonesian, she speaks French and English fluently. And uh, the fact that she speaks Indonesian is one of my, uh, greatest joy and, 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 and pride, you know, because I am the only Indonesian pillar that she has here. And um, so, so the fact that um, I try to, to put or, you know, the, that value in my writing is just, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of point of view, the way we see the world, the way we see life, uh, the way we see femininity or um, masculinity and, um, and, and the way we cohabit with each other. Right. Is, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's I guess uh, it's universal. It, like the core is of course the same as everyone else, but the way to say it sometimes is different. And, and for me, that is important. We as people, we do the same thing every day. We have to wake up, we eat, we talk, we walk, we interact with people, we're social beings. Um, but the way we do it, the way we do certain things, the way we say certain things, uh, you have to always put uh, attention to it because that defines who you are. So um, that is very important to me, yes. You know, it's, very, it's great that uh, you being the only pillar or, or role model of your, your daughter in the household, and yet she knows how to speak Indonesian, that says so much about uh, the importance that you give on it. Because usually if there would be, um, let's say, uh, different languages spoken in the house, um, yes. or, you know, usually the one that is spoken by the husband and wife, that is usually, you know, that, that is, um, uh, True. right. But, yeah. um, you know, to, to be able to consciously make an effort to speak in your native tongue, uh, yeah. you know, despite you being in France and, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, just, that's just beautiful. I mean, we don't call it mother tongue for nothing. <laughs> right, right. right. You no, know, it's, it's just very natural. I mean, I speak 
Indonesian to even to animals. <laughs> when I see dogs on the street, I would just talk to them in in Indonesian. It's it's just it's not an effort really. It's a, it's an effort for her because you know she goes to school and but then she always has to converse with me in Indonesian. But for me, it is super important because uh, I uh, when whenever I come back to Indonesia or to Jakarta, I see that even my friends. They, they 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 speak English to their kids and I think that's and and they put their kids to um, international school which is fine you know because my father used to put me into Catholic school and we're Muslims <laughs> so it's just to have a different kind of opinions and and um, again point of view but uh, but then they keep the language at home as well and then and then sometimes the kids, their, their kids, they don't speak Indonesian anymore. They only speak Indonesian. They, they even ask their, um, I don't know, the, the, the caretaker or the nanny to speak English to them. It doesn't make sense for me. You have to be proud of your own language. It's, it's, uh, it gives you some, it makes you richer culturally. Right. right. And uh, you have to always keep that. So for me, uh, my, my, my daughter eating rice and cheese, <laughs> speaking <laughs> Indonesian and French and English, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's useful tools for her later on. That's beautiful. Methods to Greatness in partnership with Perfect Health Philippines will be giving away premium healthcare products to our loyal listeners and subscribers. There will be weekly winners of Perfect Relaxer Massage Guns worth 9,900 pesos. And at the end of 12 weeks, we will give one lucky subscriber a chance to take home a fully loaded Perfect Health Trinity Massage Chair worth 200,000 pesos. All you have to do is subscribe to the Methods to Greatness podcast and follow us on our social media accounts on Facebook and LinkedIn and share the post linked in the show notes of this episode on your feed. And if you know someone who you feel would benefit from our conversations and content on the show, tag them for more chances to win our prizes. We always want you, our listeners, to aspire to improve yourselves in every aspect of your lives so you can be the best you can possibly be. Check out the Methods to Greatness social media channels for more details. So Angun, what makes you Indonesian? It's difficult to answer that because uh, it is who I am. I can, uh, it's the fact that whenever I see myself in the mirror, I see my parents, I see my heritage, my hair. <laughs> I see, um, I hear my accent and what makes me Indonesian is probably, and also it's in my name. I will never, ever, ever change anything about uh, who I am. If anything, because this is like, um, I wear the Indonesianness as a perfume, like something that you can smell, but you don't really see as, as frontally as wearing probably, I don't know, batik. You know, some people say that, ah, you say you're Indonesian, but then you don't wear batik. It's a, I don't need that. I am Indonesian. It's in my blood. Yeah. Okay. Angun, sometime middle of this year, I am scheduled to go on a trip to Indonesia. I would like to find out directly from you if there's anything that you would recommend that I try or do when I get to Indonesia what would that be? It could be anything. It could be food, an experience, a place yes, to see. Of course. Well, you know, food is very important to us. So you, uh, I would recommend all the street food. Okay. <laughs> because, you know. Uh, anything in particular, any, any well, kind of street food in particular. You know, I'm, um, my, 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 my mom comes from Yogyakarta. That is the, the central of Java. So you have to go to Jogja, Yogyakarta. Okay. And not far from there, you have Borobudur. You know, it's, uh, the, it's the, the, the oldest um, Buddhist temple in the world. It's from the ninth century. It's so majestic. It, it will take your breath away, but you have to wake up like early in the morning, like around four. And then you, 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 you walk up um the stairs and um i um, it's always amazed me to see that you know they they uh, back in the ninth century they carved that out of volcanic stones and the steps are like this big wow okay and, you know javanese people are small 
<laughs> and then once you go to the seventh uh, level, um, you know, because in every level there's like a, a carving of stories of uh, of uh, the, um, the the Hindu, uh, uh, sorry, the, the the Buddhist stories, and then and then on the seventh level there's no carving because on the seventh is the absence of uh, everything. It's just wisdom. So you have to go to Yogyakarta and then you have to go to Bali, of course. I miss my home in Bali. And um, but go to the rice fields. There's something very different and very super calming about sur being surrounded by rice fields. So the rice I, fields uh, in Bali definitely is a, yes. Yes. a must yeah. do. <laughs> exactly. And um, go to Tanatoraja okay. in Sulawesi. That is, uh, I went there when I was about 13. It's um, it's beyond. It's you feel the uh, if you go to Indonesia, you know that um, it's all about cultural heritage. It's it's about centuries and centuries of traditions and stories and um, legends and mythology and everything. When you go there and you see it, you you see uh, some kind of a. Uh, examples of it you feel like uh, it's true there are certain things that cannot be uh, told you just have to um, be there and see it and breathe it and go to Borneo okay. <laughs> oh so, you know, everything you said right there um, I will tick off all of those boxes I will make sure of it this was um, uh, recommended by Angun so I have <laughs> all of these things when yes. I get to Indonesia. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, I'd like to know, uh, and I'm not sure if you have done this, but if you would be given a chance to give a commencement speech to students right now who are coming into this new world that we find ourselves in post-pandemic, a lot yeah. has changed and there's so much uncertainty in the world. True. What would be your message to young students or young adults who will be facing the world in this new normal that we will have? Well, it's a tough one, but I believe that um, we as women, uh, we as people, we have the huge capacity to adapt ourselves. And this is, this is where we can actually um, try out something. We, we can, uh, we can test ourselves into, into something. I mean, again, young people, they have the time. They have, they have the, uh, the, the will and they have this energy to do and, and, and to conquer the world. I would say that anything is still is very possible. You just have to uh, work hard on it and willing to um, fail um willing to um, make mistakes because it's from the mistakes that you're going to learn we have to give um more time to uh, the younger generation we have to be more gentler to them uh the cancel the whole cancel culture is it's dangerous i think we are we have to be able to make mistakes we have to be able to learn from it and um, we have to be more loving and if we do not show that to the younger generation, they will never be able to perpetuate that. So, um, so my message to them is that go ahead, go do something, no matter what, just do it. Do what, what you think makes your heart full and, and, and that you can talk about it and make yourself proud. And if you fail, just do it again, try again, try again and learn. And, you know, it can only makes you uh, bolder and uh, stronger and then smarter as well. And might be, there, there might be a success um, at the end of the day. Right. Thank you for that. You know, Angun, um, I'd like to now get more specific because you've been, um, um, I guess, an internationally renowned singer, performer, uh, and to be able to keep up the level 
of, um, I guess, commitment to your craft uh, through these years? I'd like to know the, the secret to, to your longevity. I mean, you, you look beautiful. You look, um, <laughs> you, apart from the voice, you are an excellent physical specimen. And for those, <laughs> for those women out there who would like to aspire to, to be like you, uh, is there anything, and we, 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 we have to get very specific here, Angun, is there anything that you do um, to prepare yourself, to take care of yourself, your voice, um, your, your, your health? Um, what's the secret? Uh, the secret, before any concerts, I will, uh, I don't know, I would prepare my voice, uh, I, I would rest my voice and then try to do try to sing daily, like probably half hour, but just to sing for myself, not, not it's just to um, resonate all the, uh, the, 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 this, this, like uh, the bone structures, okay. <laughs> I, I would say, because a, a voice is that, is what resonates within you. So that's what I do vocally. And uh, physically, I, I, I don't actually work out. I'm, I'm, um, which is bad. <laughs> because I don't like to sweat. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but and 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 this is something that I will try to rectify. I have to say because I I'm I want to um I want to be able to do to have more energy and like uh, uh, like that. But um, I'm not a gym buff as uh, okay. you know. I, but I have to um I do certain things, but in my own way, in my own term, like Pilates and stuff. Okay, is there but anything in particular that you avoid though? That I avoid? You avoid. I don't know how to swim. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and then also, you know, I don't believe in, um, uh, I love to eat, I love food. And, you know, being in France and my husband cooks divinely well, and I love to drink. I love everything that life can give me, everything in moderation, of course, because I don't believe in depriving yourself with all the goodness, you know. Right. right. And and then I believe in um, that uh, a woman should age gracefully. Um, if you think that you need to have a certain help cosmetically, okay, then go ahead. I have never done any. Um, procedures. I believe that um, I'm, I'm, you know, we as Asian, we're kind of blessed, you know, with that. That's what, that's what the Caucasians say. They say that all the time. But that's true. That's true. Um, and, and, uh, and I believe that um, you have to, uh, to say good things. You have to read good books. You have to see the world, not only in a, you know, like a, a I would stop watching TV that, you know, especially at the moment, you know, with the Ukraine and Russia, and I would stop watching that before I go to sleep. Um, I don't want to burden myself without, um, with, uh, with all the negativities uh, in the world. We already have enough problems. And, and then I, um, I would recommend to have a lot of sex. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that okay. is... <laughs> to some that's easy to, uh, yeah. to others that's easier said than done <laughs> I, I, I believe that that is how you um, there's no miracle creams that can <laughs> they can give you the, 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 a better result <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree with that opinion and um, okay. yes so yes 100% agree and that is backed by science. That is exactly, backed by science right? Right. Okay. <laughs> you have, so, have to love yourself <laughs> as well. Love yeah. yourself and love others as well. Yes. So if well, you can't love others, love though. yourself. <laughs> so let's take that where it is that we want to take. But anyway, so I'd like to now know, Angun, uh, if there is anything that, um, what is the one thing you wish you could have known or learned sooner? I, I, I don't wish for that because I embraced every step, even when I made mistakes. 
I embrace that because I don't believe that you, you need to, um, you don't want to burn steps. You, you don't want to, you have to be willing to know the process every single, t- uh, every single step of the way. Um, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned with, you know, this YouTube phenomenon or everything that our kids nowadays are exposed to. They, people want to be famous, but being famous, uh, it can be a burden, but they don't know it when they are not famous. And they think that um, a lot of things are, 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 are going to be easier once you're famous, but it's not. Or people want to be rich. Uh, they think that it solves all the problems, but it's not. Rich people do have problems as well, and their problems probably even bigger than you, than uh, than yours and mine. And um, so, I I I uh, no, I welcome everything. I welcome wholeheartedly everything that is um, that is thrown at my way, and uh, I, I try to be graceful whenever. I'm uh, whenever hard times arrive, um, and and uh, and I try to be humble whenever there's um, uh, I'm riding a good wave. Um, so it's it's all about that. It's it's um, life is made of that ups and downs, and you have to be wanting to be down if you want to go up. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> we're on that line of thought and Goon, all of us eventually will pass from this world um yes. what would your epitaph say never thought of that i have never actually give that a thought um i would say that i have loved and um i have been loved and blessed and um, thankful for the ride. (laughs) I'm blessed, I know that I'm blessed, yes. You're blessed and what a ride it's been, not just for (laughs) you, but for for all of your fans uh, around the world who cherish the songs that you have produced through the years. And and I beg to disagree, the the life-changing, um, at least when when it is listened to, feeling that song or music gives one soul. And I am now down to my last question, Angun. So my final question, which I ask all of my guests here on Methods to Greatness, if there's anything that you could recommend that you do, that I personally try for myself, um, it doesn't have to be anything related to music. It could be anything uh, with family, with life, um, that you do, that you've found to be uh, successful, that works for you, that you could recommend to me or anyone for that matter, that we give it, that we give it a shot. What would this be? Try to surprise yourself. Go and try to live abroad. Talk to or have friends from, I, I don't know, uh, from, from different social uh, walks or different age uh, be friends with your neighbors and um, uh, go backpack, backpacking around the world and, 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 and try to learn the world, try to see how other people live. And um, you might learn the thing or two about not only the world, but about yourself and about your ability to adapt yourself. Try to fast you know, the, the, the Muslims, they do fasting in, during Ramadan, but try to do that just within your own term. Could be three days, could be a week. Try that and try to test not only um, your physical ability, but your mental uh, ability and read biographies of people, of, um, of uh, great people of the world read biography of Mahatma Gandhi or, or, or the Dalai Lama or, or Steve Jobs, you know, and, um, and uh, try to do good every day to others just because 
like completely, you know, uh, free and, and, um, and give yourself a good gift once a year. That's what you do. <laughs> There's a lot of things. That is, that is a lot. I was yes. not expecting that, but all in good. I think on a lot of those things, I will take you up uh, and go on, on a lot of th those things that you said, because I think a lot of those, if I were to encapsulate the message of that is for you to just try new things every day. And trying to, to be kind and good to yeah. people. And to be brave as well. Yeah. It's been a great conversation. Um, and John. again, thank you, Angun, for guesting here on Methods to Greatness. It's been, it's been eye-opening, you know, seeing you, um, hearing your music, seeing you on TV, and having this conversation with you. Your soul resonates with every word that you say. You truly are an ambassador of goodwill not just for Indonesia, not just for Southeast Asia, but a global icon really, not just in culture, but in being yeah. a good human being. I think um, this has been an enlightening conversation. And I, I do know a lot of women will definitely learn and not just women, but men uh, will definitely learn from <laughs> what you shared with us today. I think, uh, you know, it, it really is a blessing for me to have heard you speak. And um, uh, if there's any last message, Angun, that you would like to share with, with everyone, um, please be my guest. Well, one day I'd like to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, <laughs> this is all about me and uh, uh, as nice as it gets, but I'd like to know more about you next time <laughs> okay next time when maybe you're in jakarta or bali and i'm there we could make ah. it happen and uh we'll 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 also do it um on the podcast and that will be yes. for the next book okay and this time <laughs> i will ask you questions and then you you put whatever you want in your book. <laughs> well, thank you so much it's been an thank absolute you, John. honor thank and you pleasure so Angun, thank you very much for guesting on Methods to Greatness. Thank you. Methods to Greatness is powered by Converge. Experience better. If you'd like to work with Converge, check them out at gofiber.ph or connect with them through their social media channels. Methods to Greatness is also brought to you by Perfect Health Philippines, a leading provider of innovative first-class massage and healthcare products across Southeast Asia. If you would like me to interview anyone on the face of the earth and want them on the podcast, or if you want to collaborate with us for future content or sponsorship opportunities, or if you just have any recommendations on how we can get better, just send us an email at john at methods to greatness.com. That's john at methods to greatness.com. Until then, we'll see you next time.